Boardings in progress. All right, so here's the question. First point of today, continuing on from last week. If you are buying leads from any source, when you get the name, do you expect them to call or email you or do you still have to communicate them with them? You know the answer. So pick up the leads, pick up the phone, call the leads and pre-qualify them immediately. Okay, so if you're buying leads of any capacity and some of you do, some of you don't, doesn't really matter. But if you're buying leads of any capacity, it's about speed. Okay, so if a lead comes in, if you're if you're buying Zillow leads, Redfin leads, market leader leads, whatever, that lead comes in, you have got to be able to respond quickly. You can't send an email and then expect them to get back to you. You can't send them, hey, I'll get back to you shortly and expect them to get back to you or wait. You have to pick up the phone, call them, pre-qualify them and get them moving forward as quickly as possible. If that's not something that you're capable of doing, not because you don't want to or you don't work fast enough, but maybe your schedule doesn't allow you to do that because you're busy with other things, don't buy leads because that's the only way you're going to convert any leads that you buy. It's about being able to respond within 30 seconds to a minute from when you get the lead because no matter what anybody tells you, that lead is going other places. So even if, let's say, a company like, so Market Leader, for example, Market Leader, the way they, they sell their leads is that we only give the lead to one person. And then after a certain amount of time, if there's nothing moving forward, then we can move that lead to somebody else. Okay, that's true. But if that person, but if Market Leader got that lead because that person filled out some form, guarantee you, that somebody else got the lead, like Redfin got that lead. And so then Redfin sends it out to a Redfin person. Zillow gets lead. Everybody gets most of the time the same leads because people just click. Consumers just click. So you have to be fast. You have to be quick. Okay. So there you go. I wrote down here the next point here, just as, as a reminder, <laughs> in case you haven't remembered that selling real estate's a numbers game and it only works if you do. Okay, it's a numbers game. So whether it's buying leads, it's a numbers game. So we're not big on buying leads here, but I will tell you that if you're buying leads, you have to commit to the process for a certain amount of time. If it's like, if you go, well, I'm gonna try it out one, I'm gonna try it out for a month. Just, just give me the money. <laughs> just give it to me. Because you're not going to get anything from buying leads for a month, just like you won't get anything from, you know, trying to get expired or things like that. Sometimes this stuff takes time. It's a numbers game. Okay. No matter what source you're working, that's the key thing to that point. Okay. All right. The next thing I wrote down here is, do you know where your business comes from? Do you know the source of every listing and every sale? Do you mark on your lead cards where the leads come from? I wrote down here, source your leads to duplicate your leads. So here's a great question that I wrote down on this. And, and I've asked some of you this recently with some sales. Are there any trends to your recent successes? So what I mean by that is look at your listings, look at your buyers, look at your escrows, your closings, the quality leads that you followed up on. Are there any trends? Meaning that are they, do you notice that, wow, actually a lot of my really qualified leads or a lot of my closings have come from investors. Okay, well then why don't you make a big push to call more investors? I did this with one of our agents recently and they, when they actually did the homework of reviewing it, they realized that four of their last five closings were people that were downsizing either downsizing to retire, downsizing because they just didn't want the size of the house they had anymore, whatever the case may be. Before the five, their last five closings were people downsizing. So, okay, great. Well, then let's create a campaign or create a list of more people that might fit downsizing. So what are the trends of your business? 
So sometimes it's not just the source, it's what's the motivation. But the source is a big thing. Are they all coming from past client centers of influence? Are they coming from expired? Are they coming from for sale by owners? You need to know the source, but you need to know what the motivation is too and figure out, is there a trend of the people that you're working with? Okay, so is there a city? Sometimes we get so caught up in this, we're just prospecting all over the place. We don't realize that a bunch of our business come from a certain city. We did this with you, Lynn, about, I don't know, somewhere around October. She was just prospecting, doing her thing. She took a listing in Monrovia, closed it, and it just had dawned on me that, man, she's been taking a lot of business in Monrovia. So we looked it up, and in 2020, at that point, which I believe was October, she, was, she had the most closings in the city of Monrovia for the year. It didn't even, it just, it just one of those things, and she didn't even know that. So then we found that out and we created a marketing piece and something like that for shower and things like that. And we've done that for others of you too. So look at your leads, look at your deals. What are the trends? Source your leads to duplicate your leads. Okay. I wrote down here the next point. Remember that prospecting to people in high, to prospecting, lead generating, or talking to people, however you want to word it, in volume will lead you to repetitious boredom. Okay, it will lead you to repetitious boredom. So what that means is that we get bored doing the same thing over and over and over again. So one, don't get frustrated that you're getting bored. That's part of the process. Two, when you realize that you're getting bored, understand that you have to figure out a way to keep it exciting. So I wrote down a couple of things underneath this point. Maybe that can help out with the repetitious boredom. I wrote down here, never call more, never call one source more than one hour at a time. So what I mean by that is let's say that you're prospecting from nine to 12. Okay. Everyone prospects difference, but for the purposes of this example, let's say you're prospecting from nine to 12 and you say, you know what, I'm going to call just listed, just sold, just listed calls. I got listed, I'm going to call just listed. Well, anybody, myself included, if they made just listed calls for three hours, I would put money on the fact that your call at three hours is not nearly the level of energy and enthusiasm as, as the call was at nine because you're so bored of, I oh, just listed a property, like it's just that boredom. So what you would do is every hour switch the script. So, all right, from nine to 10, I'm doing just listed calls. So for an hour, I'm boom, I'm high energy, high enthusiasm. At 10 o'clock, I'm gonna switch to for sale by owners, okay? I, I just, I'm not giving you specific um, sources as this is what you should do, but I'm just giving you examples. Okay, great. So now at 10 o'clock, I've got a different list of people. I'm using now a different script, probably different objections because it's, you know, it's going to be about commissions. So now it's almost like I'm restarted. So I do that for an hour. And then at 11 o'clock, I switch it up again. Let's say I call absentee owners. Okay, I got a list now of absentee owners. I got a different script. Boom. So now every hour I'm switching the script up. So I'm keeping myself fresh. I'm keeping myself moving. Okay, that's one of the ways that you can help with the repetitious boredom. I also wrote down to help with the repetitious boredom is never set an appointment if possible. It's obviously hard sometimes. In the morning during your prospecting sessions, do it in the afternoon. The reason that can help with the repetitious boredom is that it gives you something to look forward to in the afternoon if you could just make it through the morning. Okay, so, so but if you, have a, if you have something in the morning, let's say you have an appointment at 11, you might just say, ah, you know what, I got an appointment at 11. I don't really feel like going through this this morning from 9 to 10. But if the appointment's not till 2, it's like, hey, I got something to look forward to this afternoon. I got an appointment. Boom, let me knock out these calls this morning. And you have a little different mindset on that. The third thing I wrote down to help out with repetitious boredom is play a game. Play a game with your prospecting. So Mike actually has, 
I have it somewhere. I, I have to find it. And I actually made a note underneath this to find it and I didn't do it. So that's on me. But he has a game of a bingo card and it's whenever something happens, you get to cross off the box. Now, some of it's uh, success related, like set an appointment, got a qualified lead, um, added somebody to my database, you know, things like that. But some of them are not. Some of them are got hung up on instantly, got cursed at, got yelled at. Like, so even if someone curses at you, you're like, oh, that's my one of my boxes. So you can play a game with it as well to keep it exciting, keep it going. I wrote down here underneath repetitious boredom, accountability partners. How do I break the repetitious boredom? Accountability partners. If someone is holding you accountable, then you're more likely to keep going, keep grinding, keep doing the work. Okay. Now, part of that accountability could be money related, but I, I tend not to get too much into that because that's not for everybody. Now, I wrote down here the last one under repetitious boredom on how you can overcome that. I don't like saying this one. Okay. I'm going to say it, but I'm telling you, I don't like saying it. Sometimes what you can do for to, to break up the repetitious boredom is prospect for 45 minutes straight or 50 minutes straight, five zero, and then take a 10 minute break and then do it again. So I'll give you an example. Let's say again that for, for again, the purposes of this example, it's nine to 12. Okay. It's your prospecting time slot. Some people, because of that repetitious boredom, three hours is just too much. It's just, I uh, just can't keep going, doing it. So instead of nine to 12, prospect from nine to 950. So 50 minutes, boom, hardcore, nonstop, no distraction prospecting. And then you take a 10 minute break from 950 to 10. And then 10 o'clock on the dot, you're bam, right back in the prospect from 10 to 1050. So you have 50 minutes focus, and then you take a 10 minute break from 1050 to 11, and then you do 11 to 1150. So that three hour time slot, you really only prospected for two and a half hours, but it was more focused prospecting. I hate saying that because some people will use that as a reason to not prospect for three hours straight. They'll just say, great, I just have to prospect for 50 minutes. And more importantly, you won't get back on the phone in 10 minutes. That's why I hate saying it. So you have to be extremely disciplined if you're going to try something like that. Because what will happen is that 9.50, you'll take a break and then you, you'll get caught up in emails and phone calls and text messages and chit chatting with people. And then you all of a sudden it'll be 11 and you've missed like an entire hour of prospecting. So I hate saying that one, but it is an option to help with the repetitious boredom. So there you go. But figure that out, ways that you can help with that repetitious boredom. But it's just part of the process, okay? So don't get frustrated that you have it. It's just simply part of the process. Okay. I wrote down here the next point. Do you have a list of your top five methods of prospecting? Can you identify them immediately? Do you have a list of your top five methods of prospecting? Can you identify them immediately? Hold on one second. close my office door. Distractions. <laughs> okay. So what are your top five methods? Is it phone calls? Is it door knocking? Is it open houses? Is it mailers? Is it social media? Is it, you know, buying leads? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it, do you have your top five methods of prospecting? The reason that sounds really simple, but the reason it's, it's good to identify this it's because sometimes we just have to identify what we're doing and not just going through the motions. Okay. That's the important part of that. All right. So I wrote down here, next point, who do you know, either personally or professionally that would trust you to handle a real estate transaction for them or their friends? Okay. That's the question. And right next to that, I put, do they know you as a real estate agent and do you discuss real estate with them? Simple question, 
But I ask this all the time when it comes to people's databases is, does everybody know you as a real estate agent? The, the answer is no. Okay. Now don't feel bad. It's never going to be a hundred percent, but the answer is no. How do I know? How do I know? Because if I grabbed your cell phone and we went down all your contacts and I asked you what everyone in your cell phone did for a living, you couldn't tell me. That's okay because I can't say either. Which means there you are also in people's cell phone and they don't know what you do for a living. But the goal is not to have too many of those people not know that you work in real estate. And then when you talk to them, when you meet them, do you discuss real estate? Do you tell them what's going on? Or do you avoid the conversation like the plague because you don't want to seem like you're working while you're at a friendly gathering? Okay. It's called working your database. That's just part of the gig. Okay. I wrote down next to that. People talk real estate all the time. It's our job to interrupt them. Our job to get in the way. Okay. So don't be afraid to have those conversations. Don't be afraid to have those conversations. <clears throat> All right, I wrote down here the next point. This is straight Mike Ferry 101. The Mike Ferry past client center of influence script that says, you know, hey, Bob, it's Mike. This is a business call. Do you have a moment for me to ask you a question? That's the script, right? So he wrote down, why does this question bother so many real estate people? The answer, because we are not sure of ourselves as a real estate salesperson or because we are embarrassed to tell people we're a real estate salesperson. So the reason we have a hard time saying things like this is a business call, do you have a minute, is we're not always sure of ourselves that am I really a great business person to call someone and say, hey, this is a business call, do you have a minute? So part of prospecting comes in through our mindset. Do we look at ourselves as great business people? Do you know, or you know, we embarrassed? And it's true. Sometimes we're embarrassed to say real, that we're a real estate salesperson. Bernie Gallerini said this. If you go back and watch the mastermind with Bernie Gallerini, he says that he's actually embarrassed sometimes to say that he's a real estate salesperson because most real estate people are lazy, incompetent, non-productive people. And he hates being associated with that. So what he says is that he's a professional telemarketer. He's a telemarketer. He's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He just happens to have a real estate license. That's a great way to look at it. So sometimes we can't say this is a business call. Do you have a minute? Because we don't think of ourselves as that type of business elite. You have to think about that when you're prospecting. I wrote down underneath this point. You have, in order to be the most effective prospector possible, you have to look at yourself the same way as a doctor, a lawyer, a financial advisor looks at themselves. I say that with a couple reasons. Number one, doctors handle everyone's health. Right. So, so they're very important to people. A lawyer handles everyone's money or, you know, freedom, money, lawsuits, all these other different things. Very important to people. Financial advisor handles people's money, your investments. As a real estate agent, you're handling their largest financial obligation, which is their house. So you should look at yourself at the same level as those people. And a doctor is never embarrassed to say, hey, this is a medical call. You have a minute? If you had a doctor friend, they would never, they would never have a hard time saying that. Your lawyer friend would never have a hard time calling and say, hey, we got a, I got a legal situation for you. You got a minute for me? Would never have a hard time saying that. Financial advisor would never have a hard time calling you and saying, hey, I got some investment stuff I need to go over with you. Do you have a minute? They would never have a hard time. But as real estate people, we have a hard time with that because we don't always hold ourselves to the standards of those people, which you should. So when you get that, that's when your prospecting goes to another level. I don't know if anyone heard what I just said, but I hope somebody got that. <laughs> uh, all right the next point i wrote down here the next point i wrote down here 
Do you use the prospecting scripts that are question based or do you have your own scripts or do you just make something up at the moment? Remember, professionals have scripts, amateurs do not. Okay. So we talk about this all the time. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You know, are you using prospecting scripts? Are you using your own? Are you just making stuff up? You are a natural born salesperson. I thought I was at one point in my life. It was one of the stupidest things I ever thought, which is saying a lot because I've had a lot of stupid things. <laughs> you know, as Mike Ferry says all the time, Robert, how many people are downloading your scripts? It's funny. But you know, that's the truth is that you have to really figure out. Now, I'm not, and now here's the thing. Here's the thing. I understand we follow a lot of Mike Ferry stuff here. If you don't like the Mike Ferry scripts, that's fine. Okay. There's plenty of people that have successful scripts out there. Okay. If you don't like Mike Ferry's and, you know, you, you look at someone like Tom Ferry or a Brian Buffini or a, a <sighs> You know, market leader sends out scripts, even though their market leader scripts are pretty much just Mike Ferry scripts, you know, just changing a few words. Um, you know, everyone's got scripts. So if you don't like the Mike Ferry ones, that's fine. Use something that you like, but you got to have some sort of script and it has to be question based. OK, so whatever it is, that's the case. We're just not good enough to wing it or just say, oh, you know, I, I don't need this. I, we're just not good enough. Okay. Or the example we use all the time, think of your favorite actor or actress, you know, Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, Denzel, whatever the case may be. They, 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 they read a script, every movie, you know, every movie, they read a script, pays them pretty well. <laughs> all right. Next point I wrote down here, you know, of course, that you're prospecting that your prospecting appointment each day is as important, if not more important than taking a listing. If you understand that, if you understand that, then you will make sure you never miss a prospecting appointment, just like you would never miss a listing appointment. So let me read that again. You know, of course, that your prospecting appointment, so your appointment set time for prospecting each day is just as important, if not more important than taking a listing. If you understand that, then you will make sure that you never miss a prospecting appointment, just like you would never miss a listing appointment. So you have to, you have to look at prospecting time slots, your prospecting appointment, the same level of the list of the listing appointment. You have to treat it at that level. The reason for that is that the more you commit to that prospecting time, the more listings or buyers that you'll work with, just the nature. But it also helps the mindset because it keeps you focused, keeps you strong, doesn't keep, move you back to being lazy. Super important. So you have to look at your prospecting appointments or time slots the same way. Okay. Next point I wrote down here, since our mindset is very important to prospecting, do you have a pre-prospecting routine to get yourself mentally prepared to win? Do you have a pre-prospect routine? This is another one of those things where going back to where we think we're natural salespeople. I don't need a prospecting routine. I wake up at 7.59, I'm on the phones at eight, let's go. I don't think that anyone's that good. Don't be mad at me, okay? Robert told me I wasn't any good. That's not what I said. <laughs> I said, you're probably not good enough to wake up at 7.59, start prospecting at eight, set a lot of appointments. That's probably not gonna happen. You need to have a pre-prospecting routine. So what is your pre-prospecting routine? Everyone could be different. Now, some people have to start earlier. There, there's somebody in our, in our company that they, their pre-day routine to get started with the prospecting role play uh, is like a 90-minute process, okay? That's real talk. And this particular agent has done everything they can to cut it out. I mean, they do a lot of different things to get themselves ready for the day. And it's not just like, well, yeah, you work out for an hour and a half. No, no, no. There's, it's working out is like 20 minutes of that 90 minute routine. And they try to cut it back. When they cut it back, then they, then they feel like they have it completed, and blah, blah, whatever the case may be. So some people, you might take you 90 minutes to get going. Others of you, it might take 15 minutes. So whatever your pre-prospecting routine is, it's fine. OK, 
Okay, but you need to have one. Don't just wake up and get on the phone. Or don't just, oh, I'll, I'll start getting on the phone now. It's gotta be a routine. So here is a, if you need help, here's a, a Mike Ferry pre-prospecting routine to give you some template, a template essentially, okay? So pre-prospecting routine could include role play and practice. Now that should be on everybody's pre-prospecting routine. That's, that's a no-brainer, okay? You've gotta get yourself warmed up. Athletes do it all the time. If you've ever been to a baseball game, they take batting practice before the game. You've been to a basketball game, they're doing layups, jumpers before the game, getting themselves warmed up, okay? Role play and practice. Talking to your accountability partners, great um, pre-prospecting routine. Reviewing your schedule, always good. Reviewing your prospecting goals, that should also be a no-brainer on your pre-prospecting routine, reviewing your prospecting goals. Okay, I say it probably once a week, Zig Ziglar. How can you hit a target you cannot see? How can you hit a target you do not have? You gotta review your prospecting goals. Chanting your affirmations, always great. Shutting down any possible distractions, again, no-brainer. Okay, so shutting down any possible distractions. Give somebody your phone. Okay, we used to do this. Actually, if you've ever been to the Mike Ferry, some of you might know this. If you've ever been to the Mike Ferry prospecting clinics, I haven't been in a couple of years. I just think they still do this. Uh, when you walk in the door, you have to give your cell phone to the receptionist. You can't have your cell phone at the desk. I don't know if they still do that. They used they to. They don't. <laughs> they don't? You can get to keep mm -mm. your cell phone? Yes. Okay. They used to do that. That used to be part of the gig. When you'd walk in, you'd have to give your cell phone to the receptionist or whoever was there. And, and if you said, well, all my contacts are there, they would tell you beforehand, print out all your contacts or whatever the case may be. And you're going to call them from the, the phone at the desk. Uh, and that used to be the deal to eliminate the distractions of people getting the appointments. I, I, I did it makes sense that maybe they don't do it now because so many, there's so much stuff coming from the cell phones. But whatever the case may be, shut down any possible distractions. Okay? Robert, what do you do when you're prospecting and an uh, expired calls you back? And like you're trying to find what's his property number while he's, di while he's calling you and then you're off your flow. Well, so that's a great question. You have a couple, couple things you could do there. If somebody's calling you back, that's a that's a prospect or someone you left a message for. You probably should call. You should probably should answer it. If it's an expired, definitely you have to answer it because mm -hmm. that might be your only chance to get them on the phone. I, as far as trying to figure out the property, you know, because I, I get it, that could be tough. Um, you just sometimes have to be, you know, a little honest about it. You know, they, you know, they call you back. Yeah, I received a phone call. Oh, okay, great. Well, you know, remind me again, what's your property address, Mr. and Mrs.? You know, I've, I've talked to 35 people so far this morning. Oh, it's 123 Main Street. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your home came up on my computer as an expired listing. Sometimes you just have to do that. If they don't like that and they say, well, never mind, they hang up. It's like, okay, well, I got their phone number. I'll just go back and do my search again. And then I can call them back. <laughs> But, but if it becomes too big of a distraction, then don't answer it. Don't take any inbound calls and then end your prospecting session a little bit early, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes early, and then do all your callbacks the last 15 or 20 minutes. Or if you got a lot of callbacks, do it 30 minutes or whatever the case may be. So that could be a, a thing there too. If it if you're calling brand new expireds, you really have to pick up the phone though. If it's an old expired, you can you don't have to pick it up. But a new if you're calling new ones, you should probably pick it up. Good question. All right. So what whatever your pre prospecting routine is, again, this is just a template. So if that if it, if that works for you, great. But whatever works for you, figure something out. All right, the next thing I wrote down here, right, is you have to ask yourself a question, which is funny because we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier today with Neil, is identify why prospecting is so difficult for you. Be honest with yourself and then talk to your coach, your accountability partner, someone else on advice. 
You know, so ask yourself the question, my biggest challenge of prospecting is blank, whatever that may be, okay? Now, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be super deep and emotional, okay? Could just be my biggest challenge of prospecting is I don't really like, I feel like I'm bothering people, okay? Right, right? Doesn't have to, now for some people, it could be my mindset, could be the way I think about myself. It, it could be that. For some people, it's just gonna be very simple. I don't like bothering people or I don't know what to say. I'm not totally confident in the marketplace. I really don't believe that I'm the best agent for them. Could be things like that, okay? Whatever it is, identify that, talk to your coach, talk to an accountability partner, talk to myself, talk to Neil, uh, whatever the case may be, and we can try to help you walk through that. But you have to identify why, for those of you that it is difficult, why is it so difficult? Some of you, it's not difficult. Some of you just prospect like crazy. That's fine. Okay. Okay. We talked about this a little bit last week, but, I, but it just bears repeating. Track your numbers every day. Track your numbers every day. It is one of the best ways to learn your strengths and weaknesses. It's only difficult if you don't do anything. <laughs> so there you go. I wrote down underneath that your numbers tell, tell you who you are. Track your numbers every day. The, the, the key thing to do that, though, is I don't think it's very valuable to track your numbers weekly. Because it's too hard to keep track. I mean, like the numbers analyzer tracks it weekly. I, what I'm saying is that don't wait, you know, okay, well, I'll fill out my numbers analyzer every Sunday. It, just fill it out every day. It's too hard to try to remember everything for an entire week. Fill it out every day. That's really will help you be more accountable. And again, tracking your numbers is a great way to learn your strengths and weaknesses. The example I give all the time in terms of tracking your numbers is that if you're going on, if your listing closing ratio is low, meaning that Robert on appointments, I'm just not getting any listing signs. What's the problem? The very first thing that I go to, if I see that you have a low closing ratio is the pre-qualifying, almost guaranteed. That's the first thing I'm gonna go to. But I don't know that pre-qualifying is a problem if you don't track your numbers. But when you track them, I know, oh, pre-qualifying is a problem. Guaranteed. Pre-qualifying is a problem because I'll bet a lot of the appointments you're going on aren't really appointments. You're going on, you're going on appointments with people that probably aren't going to sell, regardless of what's going on. And we run into that all the time. We ran into that with uh, with Nancy Dupre a couple of years ago, she was getting frustrated that her listing appointments or her closing ratio was really low. And uh, I mean, now she's, you know, it's a gal that makes 500 plus thousand dollars a year, but she was super frustrated a couple of years ago that her, her closing ratio was really low. So I asked her the question. I said, well, I bet it's the prequel. I bet you're not going on real appointments. She said, well, how can I tell? I said, well, Look up all the appointments you've gone on and see if those people ever listed with anybody. Because if they listed with somebody, then yeah, then it was you. They just didn't like what you said. But if they never listed, then you went on an appointment with someone that wasn't a real seller anyways. So she did that and realized that all these appointments that she wasn't getting were people that never listed anyways. So it was really a pre-qualifying problem. She was going on appointments for people that weren't really motivated to sell. So all of a sudden her, clo <laughs> her closing ratio on true listing appointments went from like, I don't know, 40 to 80 or something. It was crazy. She felt a lot better about herself. But it was all, but it'd be only because she tracked her numbers and I was like, oh, it's a pre-call, it's a problem. And we've had that before. So when you track your numbers, you can figure out your strengths and weaknesses, okay? So track your numbers every day. Okay, a couple more points here. A couple more points on prospecting. Remember, the only person getting in the way of your success and your prospecting results is you. Get out of the way and do your job. Talk to people daily. We get in our own freaking way, just the way it is, okay? We get in our own way of success with prospecting. Get out of the way. 
get out of the way. All right, and then the next point I wrote down, when prospecting, remain focused on these thoughts. When prospecting, remain focused on these thoughts. I wrote down a couple of thoughts here. The first thought I wrote down is there is someone in my marketplace who wants to buy a home or sell a home today. My job is to find them since they are not looking for me. First thought to keep focused when you're prospecting. There's someone in my marketplace who wants to buy or sell a home today. My job is to find them since they are not looking for me. There's somebody in your marketplace that's going to set an appointment with a real estate agent today to sell their house, set an appointment to meet them to go buy a property, sign a contract. Somebody in your marketplace is going to do that today. So you have to keep that in your mind when you're prospecting is that there's someone in my marketplace who wants to buy or sell a home today. I have to find them because they're not looking for me. We have to go find them. The second thought I, I put down here on remain focused on is always remember there are no shortcuts to any place worth going to. There are no, there are no shortcuts to any place worth going to. Okay. I know. Be, and, and that's a, that's a crucial thought to remember when prospecting because who here other than me when they're prospecting is convinced that what they're doing is not the most efficient way to find any business in the middle of a prospecting session, our mind, after we've been told, no, another hang up, another disconnected number, whatever the case may be, man, we, our mind is going crazy trying to think of different ways to find more business. It's, oh, there's gotta be a better way than prospecting. <laughs> it's got to be an easier way. It's got to be a shortcut somewhere. There are none. You have to remember, there are no shortcuts to any place worth going to. Got to put in the work. Got to make the calls. Got to dial the numbers. Okay. And the third thought I put down here, remain focused on these thoughts, is I just need one. I just need one. Here's what I mean by that. In LA, Orange, San Bernardino, Riverside County, we have offices in four counties, okay? We have agents in six counties, but we, only, we have offices in four counties, six or seven, six counties. We have offices in four counties, LA, San Bernardino, Orange, and Riverside County. The population of those four counties is 18 million people, okay? A lot of people, 18 million people. So there are not 18 million people that want to buy or sell a home today. There's a very, very small percentage of that 18 million people that are interested in buying or selling a home today. You just need one. The reason that's an important thought when you're prospecting is because you go through 15, 20 no's. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. And we think, gosh, you know, the script doesn't work. The system doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's 18 million people. It's a lot of people you have to go through. And there's only a small, small percentage of those people that want to talk about real estate. So don't get focused that there's 20 or 30 people because imagine if you had 30 no's. Okay, well, there's still 17,909,907 people, whatever that number is, okay? It's nothing. You just need one though, so keep going. Remember that thought as you're prospecting, right? So number one, I wrote down, there's always somebody in my, there's someone in my marketplace who wants to buy or sell a home today. My job is to find them. They're not looking for me. The second thought I put down to remember to focus on is always remember there are no shortcuts to any place worth going. And the third one I wrote down is you only need one. Okay. You just need one person a day. Maybe for, for based on, you know, everyone's schedule is different. Okay. So it's one person a week, one person a month, you know, but you just need one, you know, you have to keep that in mind.
And then the last, the last point I wrote down is really just kind of a, a, a quick little six, seven word summary of all these points. It is simply about numbers, activities, and action. It's simply about numbers, activities, and action. Okay. You have to, it's a numbers game. You got to put in the numbers. The activities, you have to know the activities that you're doing to prospecting. Is it calling? Is it texting? Is it emailing? Is it door knocking? Is it, what is it? Okay. And it's action. It's taking action. It's doing the, actually doing the work. That's what it's all about. Okay. All right. So look, that finishes two days worth because we did this Thursday of last week. And then this week, two days work worth of prospecting thoughts to help you build production. So hopefully there was one point in there that was interesting. Uh, you know, and if we're lucky, maybe there was two. But, you know, the point is, is that I wanted to put that down because, again, some of it's stuff you've heard before, but some maybe it was a different angle, maybe it was a different reminder, whatever the case may be, but hopefully there was something good.